host Quentin and welcome to the Rainbow of Liberation. Today we have a very um, serious topic. Um, we're going to talk about a group of people who have a genetic um, disorder, I guess you could call it. Um, it's a disease known as muscular dystrophy. It's a tough word to say. And during this, um, today, during today's clip, I know I mispronounced it, so please forgive me. Um, I just, I just learned how to um, pronounce it correctly. Um, anyway, anyway, um, now, I did have a rudimentary, um, knowledge of muscular dystrophy. I I believe I knew like the basics and I could always like Google stuff, but on this show, on this community, um, it's not just about information, it's about getting to know someone. People well in this episode just one person with muscular dystrophy, my friend Jillian. Um so around me explain it. Explain why no? I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna um, have her explain what she has lived through. Um, this is, you, know, you also get to know um, Jillian as a person, which is um, which is an important part of this community. Um, not to know. The disease or ailment a um, person with a disability has better than the person himself. Anyway, as he went, Jillian has his Do you state your name, please? Jillian. Jillian. And do you. I see your t-shirt. Do you go to um, Bristol Community College? Yes, I do. I'm in human services. And when do you graduate? I'm actually graduating in May, this May. Really? Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you. And what do you expect to do if you're, um, did you get your associate's degree or? Yes, in, in human services. Where do you expect to go from there? Uh, Bridgewater State and um, social work. Social work, okay. And what kind of career do you expect to get when you... Um... I see myself either as an advocate for those uh, who have physical or non-physical disabilities, uh, social good. work, not <coughs> Okay. Um, and what are some of your other interests? Well, I love sports. I listen yeah. to all kinds of music. Um, I like to write. I draw. I paint. You paint? What kind of things do you paint? Mostly water. Um, sometimes acrylic and sometimes oil. That's cool. Now, I also understand, well, um, we can see that you're confined, um, confined to a wheelchair. Do you would like to explain why that is? Well, I have muscular dystrophy, uh, which affects the muscles, and I was confined to a wheelchair when I was 11. Um, it affects respiratory muscles, heart, your heart, and um, there are also many other forms of muscular dystrophy, but the, the form that I have is mild, so I, most of my disease affects my muscles and my legs. Um, and you said you could walk until you were 11. Now, can you describe, um, can you describe that feeling when you realized you couldn't walk anymore? It was very tough. Um, I was still young, so I really didn't have too much of an understanding of what was going on. I was aware that my muscles would no longer work in my legs. Um, it did take me some time to get used to the fact that I had to be in a wheelchair. Um, but 
Well, once I got used to the wheelchair, I just accepted the fact that I was no longer able to walk. Was there like a build up? Like, I mean, it didn't happen overnight, did it? That you no, I, what would happen was I would stop falling down a lot more and um, my legs would like shake and I would um, get very tired and not able to walk for a very long distance. So within a year, it's when it progressively got worse and I really started falling down and had to use a wheelchair more often than usual. Um, can you describe in your own words what is muscular dystrophy? Well, muscular dystrophy doesn't really define me as a person. I try not to let it. Uh, the world today doesn't always understand uh, that I am a person, but I just do things differently. Uh, muscular dystrophy doesn't affect my mind. Uh, it mostly just affects my body, and the way I look at it is if I didn't have muscular dystrophy, I wouldn't be the person I am today. So I think um, even though it's a horrible disease, there's also the good qualities to it. it it's taught me to be a better person. Um, I have a better outlook towards people. I also have understanding for those who are disabled, whether it be uh, mentally or physically. Uh, so I think muscular dystrophy has defined me as a person, but I don't let it define me. I don't let it stop me from, you know, going to college, continuing education, or getting a job. But what is it, if you could describe the disease itself, that's why I'm, that's why I'm... Oh, well, it's a genetic disorder. Uh, usually it's the, well, I don't want to get too technical, but it's usually the, the mother and father are the carriers of the genes. Uh, the, the form of muscular dystrophy that I have is uh, I'm missing the X chromosome. Uh, which affects the, the nutrients and the neurons in my body to be able to produce a normal, healthy body. So that's why I uh, am weak and my muscles don't work as someone without muscular dystrophy because my parents are both carriers. So it's it, I, unfortunately it skips five to ten generations and I happen to be in one of those categories. Okay. Um, do you know what treatments? Um... Unfortunately, there really isn't any treatment or cure. I do go through. I do have physical therapy uh, to try to keep what I do have for my arm strength. I also uh, have occupational therapy, which helps with my hands to you know keep my fingers going. Um, you know, I do. I do have to take various uh, vitamins because my body cannot produce the proper nutrients and vitamins that a normal person has. Other than that, um, at the moment, there's no cure or treatment for it. They're working on it. Um, now, what services um, can someone with muscular different? Can you say it with me? Muscular, muscular dystrophy. dystrophy can acquire, particularly at this school. Well, it, it depends on the individual, but I think, in my experience, I like being with people. I like the interaction. I get a kind of like a huge high, if you want to call it that, of uh, being around people. Uh, I need to have that. Like being in a classroom, I need to keep my mind going because if I was to just not do anything, then my life would probably not be as good as it is today. So I think, you know, having the interaction around other people, uh, trying to get involved with, you know, local organizations or community service or even getting involved with the school, you know, as a student ambassador and student senator, you know, I. I I think that that helps keep the stimulus going and it also keeps me functioning as a person. You just talked about um, community service. What kind of community service do you practice or do? Well, 
mostly I'm a part of the the, the, the organization for muscular dystrophy, which is the muscular muscular dystrophy association. And basically, I'm kind of like the spokesperson. I you know go around and I talk a little bit about life in general and and raise awareness of the severity of all forms of muscular dystrophy and we try to get the word out there that they are working on finding a cure. Uh, we try to get lawmakers to let, you know, uh, gene therapy or one of those things. But of course, it's a big fight. So, uh, you know, for me, that's a, the community service that I've done is I try to let lawmakers know that gene therapy would be a leading cause to find a cure. For you just said it was a fight. Do you mean like politically? It can be. Uh, politics uh, can get involved. Unfortunately, you know, there's a 50-50 a about whether or not gene therapy is suitable. Um, it's a, Everything's usually about politics and religion, but I, I try to clear the ears, airwaves and, and say, it's not, I understand about life, and I understand the religious side of it, and I understand the politics, but my goal is to just kind of get the awareness that this therapy could save someone's life, not just for muscular dystrophy, but for cancer, and possibly for any other kinds of diseases out there. I know you're talking about gene therapy. What is gene therapy? Basically, it would be genes from other people who don't have any diseases or like a healthy body. It could be from a living person or it could be from a deceased person. Um, it would be an injection. It's, it's in the process. I'm not too sure of it yet, but I know it's an injection. And every six months, the person would be required to go for an injection and it would stimulate the body and it, it would be like putting a new uh, system in you and it would tell your body hey you don't you don't have muscular dystrophy anymore you can stop working and it would slowly build the process to a recovering body so that you're a, a newly developed person like possibly hopefully okay well, Jillian, thank you very, very much for everything you talked about just now. Thank you. Um, you're welcome, and I very appreciate your time. So. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Thank you very much, Jillian. I appreciate everything you just shared, and I know, and everyone should know who watches this video. It's very important. And it touches on a sensitive topic, especially to Jillian. Um, and please share this video um, with anyone who would benefit with information about the muscular dystrophy. Jillian just shared like, a whole lot. Especially, please share this video with anyone who you think might need to be, um, might need their minds changed, might need some persuasion is what I was searching for, um, about gene therapy, it's its appropriateness when um, exploring treatment options for people with muscular dystrophy. Um, I don't know much about gene therapy other than what Jillian had just told us, but um, and I don't normally like to push my own police on people, but 
if Jillian says that this is something that could change lives and save lives, that this is something you know, people should um, be willing to try um, for whatever reason people find it unethical. And I don't see it. I think what is unethical is denying people the opportunity to help change lives, to save lives. Jillian, Jillian, God bless her, she feels, she seems more sympathetic to um, to um, naysayers and skeptics and you know whatever, but I think I think it would be very um, who of us to share this. Politicians who have whatever reason to be skeptical of gene therapy. Um, I think that we should do whatever we can to make sure scientists have um, the ability to legally explore this treat, treatment possibility, possibility and um, the funding to explore it. And you know, people need to be, people need to Persuaded, and I hope this video can persuade them better, address this point better. Um, so please just share it with um, anyone who might be skeptical. Um, and I, I'm going to just leave it at that. Just share, get people listening, get, get people discussing this. Enlighten people. That's what the Rainbow Liberation is for. Enlightenment. But until then, until next time, this is Quentin of the Rainbow Liberation. Science.